How you doing guys? A lot of you guys have been asking me if I can cook some of the deer that I recently harvested uh, for you guys and show you guys how I do it and stuff. So that's what I'm going to do today. I got uh, some of the pieces of backstrap and one of the tenderloins from that buck I harvested. This is going to, I'm going to try to make it into like a catch and cook, but I guess you can call it like a kill and cook or something. And um, I'm just going to show you guys a real quick summary of like how the hunt went and just so you guys can see the buck and everything. But if you guys want to see the full videos, there's going to be a link right here, and I'll make sure to remind you, or right here, I don't know, but I'll make sure to remind you uh, at the end of the video, because I'm also going to put them down below. So I'll remind you guys if you guys want to finish seeing this one, and then go check those ones out. So let's go ahead and get into cooking after the summer. Watching the deer way up on the top of that hill. And there goes Adrian. He's gonna stock up on him, eight, nine hundred yards, way to almost the peak over there. All right, guys, right behind this rock behind me, I'm about 200 yards away from all those bucks. Who knows if it'll happen? But I'm about 150 yards away from where I'm trying to get to. So, fingers crossed. I hope that I hope I get it in. Oh, he's creeping. The deer are right in front of him. Right there. You heard him fall though, right? Yeah, I saw him fall. I know I am. Right over here. See, now you're starting to scare me. There's your arrow. Oh, yeah. You did it. Yeah. How good is that blood? Bubbly. Long, Told long, you. Long blood. Watch for rattlesnakes. It's not ginormous. Oh, my gosh. What are you talking about? Oh, he's a little crabby on top, but. Oh, man. Yeah, he is pretty crabby, but yeah, he's, he's a nice. nice one. Yeah. So this is a monster buck. We found him. Mm -hmm. Wow. One finally slipped up, made a mistake, and we capitalized. Oh, that thing punched right through him. Yeah. This this is a slick trick magnum right here. 125 grain, complete straight pass through. He he didn't run what 25 yards. Yeah. I'm serious, 25 yards. But uh, we're gonna start cleaning this guy up, and I think this guy's going on the wall. All right, guys. That was a quick summary. <laughs> Alright, all right, guys, that was a quick summary of what happened, but uh, he's at the taxidermist right now. We're going to get him back pretty soon, but let's go ahead and get started. We're just going to, I'm going to make steaks today, like little steaks, and I'm going to show you guys some of the stuff. You just need a real sharp knife, and there's a couple things that are important when you're starting to cut into it. So the main thing you want to do when you're cutting these up is the first thing you're going to want to take all this white stuff off. All the white, you only want uh, red meat. That's all you want. All this stuff can come off. And you're just gonna start working at them and your whole goal is to take the white stuff off so as you guys can see a majority of the white has been cleared off of them there's still little bits but i mean it doesn't harm much if you got a little bit so now all we're gonna do these are cleaned up good enough we're gonna cut them into little steaks now so the biggest part when you're cutting these right now let's say like this piece since it's a nice one um it's how thick you want them. you can eat deer you know medium rare People like it like that. So it really depends how thick you want them. I like cutting them this way, which is against the grain, helps them get a little bit more tender. But I say we're gonna cut ours about right there's a, a good distance we like ours. So we're just gonna cut it straight through. Now, there you go. You got a little steak. And one thing you guys gotta notice is when you're cutting them, sometimes it looks like you're cutting them thick, but they'll stretch out like this piece of meat. It was sitting like that and it looks really thick when you cut it. But then you know you lay it out and it thins out a ton so it's one thing you got to keep in mind cutting the tenderloins the same thing you just come up here and you cut your slices i always keep them separate because i like to taste the difference but one thing with the tenderloin is you'll usually get like these v shapes this one isn't very deep but you'll get like v shapes well now we got all the pieces cut right here we're gonna start getting everything else ready to cook i'm just gonna let this sit here and i'm gonna show you guys 
our seasonings and well, what I do to get the pan ready and all that. But well, right now I'm gonna cut up a little bit of garlic or I think we might have already minced garlic or something, but I'm gonna use some garlic and I'm gonna get some butter and everything. And I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on this pan and then I'm gonna season them up and the pan should be hot and start cooking. So let's get to it. I'm gonna find me some garlic and butter. I like, I prefer using fresh garlic like this, actually doing this. Minced garlic, you guys can use it too, but I just, I don't know why, I just prefer using fresh garlic. I think it turns out a little bit better personally. At this point, I'm just gonna mince it. You know, I can do it like professional chefs, and, but no, I'm a cheater, so I'm just gonna use one of these things. It minces it in seconds. That's good enough. So one thing I do before I season all my meat before I cook it is I actually dry it off. So it probably would have been better to dry it off before I started cutting it, but I just think it takes the seasonings a little bit better. So I'll get a little paper towel and you know, it does, doesn't take long. So after you dry out the meat, you may notice that the meat almost gets like sticky feeling, like a little bit stickier than when, when it was moist. That is why I personally think that the seasonings stick to it a little bit better. So I'm gonna keep this really simple, just salt and pepper. That's all I'm gonna be using today. And what I personally like to do is I'll take salt or my seasonings and I pour them in my hand. It's just a little bit more convenient for me. And I just grab my fingers and pinch them over. So you can use regular pepper. It, it will turn out just perfectly fine. I've done it before, but I personally like using this Montreal uh, steak seasoning. It's, mo it's like a, a lot of peppers in there already and stuff but there's also some salt in here so when you do put your salt down uh, you want to make sure you don't go too heavy you pour this in your hand you guys can see it's like a lot of pepper peppers in it and stuff so this stuff once again I just grab it and I pinch it over all of them and at this point like I said you can really choose how much you want on on your meat at this point I also heard that when you let it bounce off your forearm it tastes better after you have seasoned it, if you just flip it over and bounce it around a couple of times, a little bit of the seasoning falls off, not much. You just put the other side back down and kind of, you can kind of massage some of it up. We're on the other side now. And like I was saying, you don't even really need to put salt because you put salt on the first side, just what I do. And on this side, you don't need nearly as much as heavy of a seasoning. All right, now we're getting into the good stuff. This is extra virgin olive oil right here. And this is what I prefer using. You can use really any oils some people can use just straight butter but i like a little bit of olive oil so you just want a, a thin layer of oil that will just barely cover the bottom of the pan so now i have left the oil on for probably like a minute and a half two minutes since there's barely any oil and it was on high i actually lowered it now it should be hot i can feel heat coming off oh yeah that's hot it's too hot almost <laughs> but now we're just gonna lay these in there and that's kind of like the noise you like to hear right there so now that everything's kind of cooking here, you don't need it and when, when your pan's hot and you just threw them in there, you don't need them on long. So now that they've been on for a little bit, a couple minutes, you're gonna flip them. So a lot of times this process is really quick. You don't need to burn them all the way through, cook them well done. You can't eat them medium rare. I actually like eating them a little bit towards that side. Uh, it makes them more juicy in my opinion. But if you've got, like I turned the pan down a little bit so we can hear over it, these ones are gonna take a little bit longer, but if you've got the pan piping hot like we had on when I first put them on, it's literally, they're done in like three minutes at most. So I'm sure these two pieces are done right here. My assistant, you guys know him, Juju. He's gonna be helping me out here today. He's gonna cut into these. Now usually, you won't cut into your pieces of steak for a couple minutes. You usually wanna let them cool down so that they actually suck in the moisture but a lot of times people like eating them hot, so we're gonna test it out. That one's gonna be a little bit more, yeah, see that one's just about perfect, huh? Mmm. Some of the best steak I've ever had. Hundred dollar steak right here. So see, what happens is like I was just explaining, when you let the steak sit, it actually still is holding in all the hot juices, so it's still cooking. So yeah, it might be a little bit, you know, red inside when I just take it off. But after it cooks a little bit, if you were to cut into it later, it would be cooked a little bit more inside. All right, so this is all I'm actually gonna cook on video here. I didn't want to draw out the video too much because I got all that uh, steak left to cook. So this is all we're gonna cook right here. 
and we're actually gonna eat this for you guys and just tell you guys, did you use the taste tester? The, did you notice the difference between the ones that are a little bit more charred and yeah. not? Yeah, so like I was saying, some people actually prefer them a little bit more charred, so in that case, you just let everything cook in a little bit longer. But the steak right here, this recipe is pretty good. I've had good success with elk, with deer, with javelina, just about everything. The back traps and the tenderloins uh, it turns out amazing when you do it like this. And you guys can even throw in your little bit of your own twist. I encourage you guys, you know, testing out new recipes, maybe, you know, going with that and maybe throwing something else you like in with it. And sometimes you can get, you know, an amazing result off of that. That's all I did. And I mean, I got a thousand different ways I cook it now. All right, guys. So once again, like I said, I'll remind you guys, if you want to see the whole hunting videos, rattlesnake catching cooks, anything, go ahead and subscribe. But like I said, links are down below to watch my hunting videos and how I harvested this deer. But I noticed you guys really like the catch and cooks. So I'm going to be, you know, doing a bunch of them. So go ahead and comment down below some of the catch and cooks you guys want me to do. I'm thinking about maybe catfish, striper, maybe even some hunting cooks. We've got a bunch more tags coming up and we're actually going to cook it out in the field we're thinking. And I'm thinking like a raw striper or something. Just cook them or eat them out in the lake. Something cool like that. So go ahead and comment down below what you guys want to see. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you outdoors. And you can't forget, we always use hot sauce. Perfecto. Alright, I'm gonna start cooking again. Everything in here practically burns up. Tastes ten times better. You know? What about Play-Doh? Go ahead. And I'll see you outdoors. What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I was just laughing. What are you laughing at? <laughs> hey, he should do this at the end. Be like. <laughs>